run that stuff. What is that? A message from Dadbug itself? Uh, hi, this is Steve from Dadmazon. I'm out in front with your delivery. Oh, okay, I'll be right down. Wait, no, I need to put on pants. I can't find my pants, but, I wrapped, but I'm wrapped from the waist down in a duvet. Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, no, no. Wait, I'll be right, I'll be right there. I found on some capris. What is this? Who is this? Dadmazon? I mean, I'm willing to put on, I'm willing to put on pants. This is not what I was expecting, guys. I got a package. Oh, I bet you it's the socks I ordered. I opened up the box and started pulling the packet peanuts out. Oh man, these socks reek. Okay, these are definitely not socks. This is... Butterflies? Oh boy. I don't even want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. Hey, Amanda, your box of dead butterflies is here. What's up? What? You ordered butterflies? You can order dead butterflies online? These aren't yours? Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some now. Okay, I love you. I take a look at the box again. Oh, this is to Damien's house. No, I give the box to Damien. I'm like, hey, dude, I got this message package to you. No, listen, she just bought her own with my money. That's fine. Let her do that. <laughs> okay. I should take it over to him. I jog over to Damien's house with the box. I pull his uh, back, his door knocker, but suddenly the door opens. Mr. Shepard, to what do I owe you the pleasure? Whoa, how'd you know I was about to knock? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Anyways, um, I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. I hand him the box and his face lights up. What a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this many things. Um... Not to pry, but what are you going to do with those butterflies? Would you like to see? This is how you die, Charlie Shepard. Sure! <laughs> Damien leads me into a study, that's right, where he had those things, duh. Where he has a, a workstation above his desk is a wall of pinned butterflies, moths, and beetles. Oh yeah, that's really something, Damien. I am quite proud of my little collection. Did you do all this yourself? Of course, I find it relaxing. How do you, uh... It's simple, here, let me show you. These aren't quite ready yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight so they're easier to work with. I'll have some over here. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edges. He pulls out an all-black butterfly and shows it to me. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The backs of the wings are a gorgeous, iridescent green color. <laughs> oh, and the pigment on this one is so nice, too. Anyway, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a, thin, a pin through the thorax. Damien uh, slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antenna with forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on and around it. He does this so effortlessly that it's almost hypnotic. I have a frame here that I think this one would look pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? And then I remove all of the pins and put it on display with the others. I take a closer look at Damien's collection. One with bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one is so pretty. Damien takes it off of the wall. <laughs> ah, yes, that is a blue morpho. One of my favorites. I think I've seen one of those in real life, actually. They were a lot prettier when they were alive. He hands a small frame to me. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. Oh, I couldn't take this. I insist. Believe me, I have more than enough. Oh, thank you. If you ever have an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. I think I'll leave that up to you, but I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butterfingers. Nonsense! You have beautiful, steady hands. You would make a fine taxidermist. <coughs> Am I blushing? 
Damien walks me to the door and gives me a warm smile as I leave. Do take care of yourself, Charlie. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. Okay. Welcome. You got that. All right. So, date with Robert went terrible. I'm okay not going on another date with him. Damien, Damien's weird, but okay. Um, I feel like I don't know, should I do one more date, like a regular date? I feel like I should do one more first date and then do my first second date. If I've still got my voice in me. <coughs> like, given all the stuff with Mary, I don't even want to, I don't even want to touch that. And so, against my better judgment, I am going to... Let's see, what would it be? It would be... You know what? Let's hang out with Matt again. Let's do that. Let's hang out with Matt one more time. Uh, has any of this changed? I don't think so. Alright, let's do a second date with Matt. <coughs> this will be my last recording for the day, I think. Instead of messing with the guy, why don't I just walk over and grab some coffee? I'm feeling sluggish today anyway. Amanda! Amanda sticks her head out of her room. Father! Wanna go to the coffee spoon? Oh, so you can, you can get called cool once and now you're the cool dad who hangs out at coffee shops and listens to Neo Jazz and stuff? Amanda! Are you gonna bring your laptop and your leather-bound journal so you can work on your poetry anthology? Do you want coffee or not? Let me grab my laptop and my leather-bound journal. Oh, for your poetry anthology. I see how this works. Ah. Amanda and I make a short walk to the coffee spoon. The place is quiet. Just a few people hanging out and reading books in the cozy little nooks. I walk up to the counter and see a familiar pierced face. Hey, you were the dude I yelled at at a bunch the other night. <coughs> Amanda casts a sideways glance at me. He tried to sell me some shirts. And who might you be, miss? Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. The person that I am a father to and very protective of. An honor to make your acquaintance. My name is Pablo. Did I mention that I make witch house music? I wouldn't call witch house music... I wouldn't call witch house music, but okay. A piercing blow to my ego. Though, a piercing blow to my ego, though not one that will dissuade my need to impress you. Oh, my innate dad senses tingle. I am overwhelmed with a fatherly protective energy. I must protect my child. <laughs> Reappropriate lines from Taken. I don't know who he is or where he lives and all those things, so that's not going to work. I'm not going to defend Witch House. How would that help? Okay, uh, I'm just gonna change the subject. Anyway, Pablo, I didn't know you worked here. Uh, yeah, man, today's my first day. Matt's still training. Charlie! Matt comes out washing from washing dishes in the back room to meet Amanda and me. He and I high five as cool people do. <laughs> I see you've met my newest employee. At your service, although I'm only here until Vacant Vale starts their world tour. When is that? Well, we have to put out a record first. All right, Pablo. What do we do with customers again? Right, right, yes. Pablo clears his throat. Hello, good folk of Mabel Bay. Can I interest you in a tasty caffeinated beverage? <coughs> Hold on, I'm getting sent stuff. <gasps> I got a friend that's doing some... Some stuff. I'm sorry. I'm totally ogling over pictures of myself in a weird way. That looks cool. Hold on. I'm totally. <laughs> Innate beauty of things. Um. A smashing pumpkin spice latte, please. A classic. And you? Uh, let me get an Americano football decaf for cutie. <laughs> Father, okay, decaf for cutie. Wait, no. That's dumb of me. 
All right. Decaf, sounds like you're settling. I have a very early bedtime that I just cannot miss. Oh, <laughs> the sound of settling is a death cap for cutie song, which was the band that this is a pun off of. So when I said it, I thought you were... It sounded like you were setting... Uh, settling in. Uh, I'm going to stop talking now. Hold on, I'm kind of repeating some stuff here. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stop talking now. Uh, coming right up, Pablo gets to gets to work making our drinks while Matt observes him. He'll get the hang of it for as goofy as a duty is. The kid works hard. Hey man, that concert was a lot of fun. We should hang out again. Hell yes. I'm actually going to be done training Pablo in a couple hours and was going to go record shopping. You want to come? Yeah. Pablo brings us her drinks and Amanda buries herself in her laptop. I spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes with Matt. Last time we hung out, he told me that he had trouble hanging out with other people, but for some reason, he and I can joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel really comfortable around him. Oh, that's so nice. Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda, and we start walking to the record store. Have you ever been have you ever been here before? No, I mean we have a record player in our living room, but all I have are two copies of Frampton Comes Alive. Oh, this would be fun then. We're gonna find you some good stuff. I don't remember the voice I did for Matt originally. The walls of the store were packed with posters and artwork and stickers and records. A few people were milling around, flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. So, why do people still buy records? There's a lot of people who will try to tell you that vinyl sounds warmer or more true to the artist's intent, but really, I think it's just nice to collect records. It's cool that in this day and age, we still have every... We have just about every song ever created available instantaneously on our phones, but there's something about holding an album and getting to see artwork in your hands that I'll always love. That's why I try to get as many records I can in physical form when possible. Remember when we were kids and we would have to ra wait around by the radio with a cassette tape so that we would record our favorite songs? It made each listen special. And mixtapes were even cooler because of how much work they took. And now you just make a playlist, and I think... The last time gave me a real mixtape was high school. I look around the multi-level record store and spot them. Genres, Future Wave, Jungle, Anarcho, Punk, Nunsploitation. I have no idea where to start. Man. Hold on. This is a little overwhelming. Ah, taxis. Hey, let me help you find something you might like. If you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? Um, I would be a strawberry milkshake. If you could buy one type of candle scent, what would it be? No, no. I don't even know what that means. That sounds amazing. What's your favorite ambient sound? Bowling, Star Trek bridge. <laughs> The howls of the bone chorus, no. I almost stick with rain. What's your dream vacation spot? Active volcano, living off the fat of the land in Ibiza, starting a new life in the Baltics. What's your deepest, darkest fear? I worry that people are nice to me only because they want something from me. I fear that I don't deserve happiness and won't ever get it. What if nobody exists but me and I have fabricated this universe? Saying you too when the waiter tells you to enjoy your food, no. Uh, let's see here. I fear that I don't deserve happiness and won't ever get it. Man, Matt thinks for a minute. Hmm. Huh? I know just the thing. Hey. Matt runs to the other end of the store and returns holding a record behind his back. He shows it to me. This is Dark Knight of the Soul by Danger Mouse. This one almost didn't get released, but there were a ton of awesome collabs on it. Super underrated album. I think you'll really enjoy it. Whoa, dude. Thanks for the recommendation. You're going to have a great time, promise. Matt and I bring our records to the register. A young girl with a septum ring and a buzz cut stands behind the counter with one ear butt in. Usual stuff today, Matt? Eh, just some light pickups. Matt plays his three albums on the counter. Swear I'm good at this by Diet Sig. 
Forever by Mystery Schools, and Greatest Hits by Remo Drive. Tight. The cashier rings Matt up and hands his albums back in a bag. She stares at me suspiciously. Who's a nerd? Aw, uh, that nerd's my buddy Charlie. Charlie, this beacon of human charm is Molly. I got kicked out of art school for destroying my paintings at the end of every critique. Lovely to meet you. Uh, anyway, Matt, is the open mic night still on? You know it. Are the third waves going to do a special acoustic? I might see if I can get a few of the girls together. There's an open mic night? Yeah, dude, we do it every month at the Spoon. Some amazing talent always comes through. Got a flyer for it right here. You and Amanda should come by. Aw, oh, Matt plushes. I mean, if you're not doing anything. Will Vink and Vale be playing? <laughs> if only. I finish paying for my record and we head out of the store. Man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been in a record shop like that since uh, Vans had shag carpeting. Well, now that you mention it, isn't it strange to think that all of those weird little musical memories? How do you mean? Well, I think music is a very time and place sort of thing. A song is important to me, not only in that I think it sounds good, but where I was, and what I was doing when I listened to it. There is music that reminds me of exes, of high school, of being so poor I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. All that. And listening to those songs reminds me of those moments of my life. Yeah, even the pop concert that Amanda made me take her to is special to me. I mean, I'm not a fan of the band, but hearing their songs on the radio reminds me of how young and excited Amanda was. And then even that reminds me of a younger me going to see my favorite bands in concert with my friends. And we would all go to see my, we would all always go to my friend Ch Cynthia Chapman's house beforehand and smoke pot in her basement like we were so sick, like we were so sick. Her parents definitely knew. Wait, when was the last time you smoked? Decades. Dude, me too. Where do you even get pot now? Is that like even what the kids call it these days? Uh, I don't know. But I bet I could find out. Do you want to get high and listen to our new records? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, Matt, Matt, buddy, Matt, buddy, buddy, buddy. We can enjoy the music without the paraphernalia. We've been pretty good on this so far. And I don't think that just because we take that would take us to a different level, that would take us to a good level. I feel the music will get us there on our own. Nah, man, I think I'm good. It uh, it's a little juvenile, I guess. Let's just go back to my place and listen. Oh yeah, let's go to your place. Matt and I walk back to the cul-de-sac and head to his house. I hope he's not bummed about the no weed thing. We sit around and listen to through the Diet Sig album that he bought, which is catchy as hell. I look around the room again and see photos of Carmen Sita growing up. I spot a young woman with a huge smile in front of, in one of the pictures with the two. Oh, who's that? Oh, that was Rosa. She was uh, Carmen Sita's mother. She died when Carmen Sita was young. I'm sorry to hear that. Amanda lost uh, Alex at a young age, too. I can understand how hard that must have been. I spot a framed gig poster on the wall. On it, there's an illustration of Matt and Rosa surrounded by flowers. Uh, the cursive letters read, Stillness the Dancing. Looks like they played the, for the Sound Garden over a decade ago. Were you two in a band together? Yeah, yeah that was the reason I was touring so much when I was younger. We traveled the whole country in this rinky-dink little van. It was hard to start, but once it got started... And gaining notoriety and seeing how much our songs meant to kids, it was incredible. Wow, that seems like a life that some only dream of. It was, and it was difficult. But I couldn't have done it without someone by my side. Rosa and I knew that we couldn't do it forever. The hours on the road, missing family, sleeping in the van. All that stuff, so once she became pregnant with Carmen Sita, we put down our we put down roots in our favorite town to play in. Right here. And cause since she was a kid, Rosa always had a dream. To own a quiet little coffee shop. She died before it opened. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Man. Don't be, don't be. I'm not, I'm not really sure what to say. I couldn't possibly count the number of times I told people the same thing after Alex died. Matt gets up to flip the record. Next to the turntable, I notice a dusty piano. Do you play? Mm. Eh, I'm out of practice. I used to jam on the keys back in the day. Oh, yeah? 
I fronted the hottest seven-piece ska band that ska band that Eagle Rock Bay High School had to offer. No way, you had a ska phase? Ska never dies. Except for the Scommunist Manifesto, who broke up after the senior talent show to pursue solo careers. <laughs> Dude, that is rad. Matt pulls out the piano bench. Give me uh, some of that two-tone love. Oh man, let's see if I still got it. I sit down. <laughs> I am not going to do Wonderwall to Matt. I will stick to Ska Roots here. Hey, I think I'm doing it. I'm playing Ska. Wait, that was just smoke on the water. Oh, Matt, I've forgotten how to play. The Deep Purple is appreciated nonetheless. All right, buddy, can you top that? Uh, I shouldn't. Aw, oh, come on. No, I'm... It's been a long time. Uh, do I push him or no? Do I push him or no? I feel like this is the kind of encouragement that he needs to hear but doesn't want to hear. Matt, you just sat through a butchered version of Smoke on the Water. How much worse can it be? Matt stares at the piano. Okay. Oh man, my battery's dying. Great. I didn't even realize her she realized my cord my thingy got unplugged. Oh that's that's adorable. Okay, I'm uh, I'm okay. Matt closes his eyes and runs in his fingers. He breathes in deep and starts a melody. If I didn't know that he hadn't played piano in a long time, I never would have guessed that he plays a sweet tune filled with emotion. I've never heard it before. Is this one of his works? This is so cool. Matt finishes the song and opens his eyes. How was that? That was amazing. It, it's nothing. Come on, man. That was killer. Are you going to pull that out for open mic night? No, no, I never play at those. You're really good. I just, I don't do it anymore. I don't like being up there and alone and having so many people stare at me. It's not fun anymore. I can sense he's getting uncomfortable. I am not pushing him any further. All right, man, I hope you know how beautiful your music is. Thanks. Matt and I sit and listen to more records until it gets late and I decide that I need to get to bed. Matt walks me to the door. Night, dude. I smile. Night, man. Aw, oh, man, we're bonding a lot. I walk inside. The house is dark, save for the silver of light, or sliver of light coming from beneath Amanda's door. Huh? I knock quietly and enter her room. She is sitting at her desk with her camera, editing photos. Hey, Amanda. Amanda swivels around and defeats me and slumps down. So, what's up? Dad, I'm hungry. What? Wait, no. Wait, no. Hi, hungry! Oh, no. I'm Dad. <laughs> I promised myself I would never let it come to this. I'm sorry, kiddo. You set it up, I spike it down. Monster. You want spaghetti? Yes, please. <laughs> Amanda and I boil pasta and heat up sauce in a pan. Well, I boil pasta and heat up sauce while she watches. Despite my best efforts, I am not able to set it on fire. How was record collecting? It was great. Did you know Matt used to play in a band? No way. Was he good? Well, I don't know if the band was good, but he played some piano for tonight, and it was amazing. He played piano, dude. Yeah, I brought it up that he should play at the open mic night that's happening in his coffee shop, but... He got kind of weird about it. I saw a flyer for that. We should go. It's not too late to start a father-daughter punk band and play a couple mm -hmm. tunes. Yeah, let me break out my glockenspiel. I only know hot cross buns, but we can work off of the chord progression from that. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I don't know hot cross buns. Amanda and I have a nice dinner before she goes back to her room to do photography stuff. And then I end up watching True Life. I'm a house hunter. They're staging an intervention for the house hunter, who is crying uncontrollably over the color of the walls. They know they can paint the walls of their house. Any color. That song is stuck in my head all night. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, you can 
pitchfork would like that. All right, so. I don't know what 520 means. That should be a musical term that I should be aware of, but I'm still not, and I'm sorry. <laughs> 